The embroiderer's hoop make consists of a frame or base, three removable work surfaces, each of a different size, quick change brackets with push in pins, two of the brackets are round and two are rectangular, and four black thumb screws for mounting the various boards onto the base. Make sure that you set the base down so that the two arms are facing you. You should be able to see the four holes that are for mounting the different sizes of boards on the base. The largest board is sized for adult garments as well as flat goods such as towels, tablecloths, and pieces of fabric. The middle sized board is perfect for children and youth clothing, and the smallest surface is designed for sleeves, pant legs, and infant wear. These three surfaces can be easily mounted to the base for use. Now let's look at some of the features of the Hoopmates boards. Contoured neck and shoulder for easy positioning of garments such as shirts. A center groove to aid in correct alignment such as the center of a garment. Measurement lines in both inches and meters to align such items as towels, blankets, and flat goods. The many holes on the surface are there for two purposes. One for almost unlimited placement of your hoops, and the second for using them as alignment. One of the most valuable features of your hoop mates is the lip to hold the hoop mates securely in place on the edge of a table. This allows you to push against the hoop mates while hooping and not have to worry about it sliding away from you during the hooping process. Setting up the embroiderer's hoop mates for your hoop. First, decide which surface is suitable for the size garment and type of operation you have. Mount the surface to the base using the screws provided. Be sure to use the thumb screws at the lower edge and top edge as needed. The top screws may be removed if they're in the way for an unusually high mounting. Leaving one of these upper screws out will in no way degrade the performance of the embroiderer's hoop mates. Notice that the lip of the embroiderer's hoop mate protrudes below the lower edge of the base. This lip should be slid up against the edge of the table to stabilize the embroiderer's hoop mate and keep it from sliding. Setting up your hoop mates for your garment. Remove all the brackets from your hoop mates so that you now have a totally blank board. Lay your garment down on top of the hoop mates, aligning the shoulders to the shoulder edge of the hoop mates and feeling to see that the center of the garment falls in the center groove of the hoop mates. Notice you have not pulled the garment over the hoop mates at this point. You have only placed it on top of the embroider's hoop mates. You should be able to fill this groove beneath where you marked the center of the garment or through the placket of the garment. If this marking does not line up with the groove on the hoop mates, after you've made sure that you've placed the shoulders of the garment on top of the shoulder edge of the hoop mates, make necessary adjustments in how you have laid the garment on top of the hoop mates. Place your index finger on top of the marking or dot on your garment that indicates where the center of the design is to be placed on your garment. Keeping your finger in place, flip the garment over your hand enough that you can see where to place a dot or mark that will correspond on the hoop mates with the dot that is on your garment. Your hoop mate should now have a dot or mark directly on it to indicate approximately where the center of your design will be so that you can place your brackets for holding your hoop accordingly. Remember, it is not necessary to be exactly in the center of the hoop unless the design is so large that it uses the full size of the hoop. Mounting your brackets. Place your hoop where you intend to mount it on the hoop mates. Since hoops vary from company to company and from size to size, you will need to experiment somewhat with the placement of the brackets for the best results. Position the large brackets as needed around the hoop. Remember, you may wish to remove one of these face mount screws for some hoop placements. Be sure to use one of the large flat brackets against the machine mounting whenever possible. It is best to position the large five position adjustable bracket on the left side. This will give you positioning over several garment sizes by making only minor adjustments to your brackets. Notice the shape of the rectangular brackets. You have a flat side and a wedged side. You may turn either side to the hoop for more placement possibilities. Secure these brackets by pushing the mounting pins into the appropriate holes on the hoop mates. 
When placing the round brackets, take the pins out of them and check for best positioning so that the holes in the brackets line up with the appropriate holes in the hoop mates. If part of your bracket set includes these two round eccentrics, you will notice that they each have a soft black ring around them. Those are for allowing expansion of your hoop during the hooping process. Don't force those against your hoop. Instead, allow them to gently touch your hoop. In cases of extremely thick garments, you will want to rotate them slightly away from the hoop so that it can expand the full amount necessary. Hooping with the embroiderer's hoop mates. Let's hoop the left side of a garment. Position the hoop and adjust the brackets to hold it in place as I just covered. Lay the stabilizer on top of the hoop and tape it down to the embroiderer's hoop mates. By using tape, your stabilizer does not get out of position while you're hooping. Button all the buttons on the garment front and zip up any zipped garments. Pull the garment over the embroiderer's hoop mates with the working surface of the garment to the front. Align the shoulder seams of the garment with the upper shoulder edge of the hoop mates. Align the center line of the garment with the center groove on the embroiderer's hoop mates and smooth the fabric down. You can double check your alignment by seeing if the alignment mark you made on the garment's center line falls exactly on the groove of the hoop mates. This is accomplished by feeling for the groove through the garment. However, some garments are not cut straight of the grain. If you have pulled your garment onto the embroiderer's hoop mates correctly and that dot does not line up with the groove, this is the case. In this situation, it is best to ignore the center line and hoop it as it falls on the embroiderer's hoop mate. Remember, the garment will fall on the embroiderer's hoop mate as it will fall on the person wearing it. Now you are ready to hoop. Press the inner ring onto the garment at the outer hoop ring. You can be assured that the hooping will be straight every time. Your hooping can be greatly eased by using the snappy. The snappy takes the strain out of the hooping process.